The method was first, pre first presented in 1974, and uh, although at that time it was not perceived as a triangle, uh, Duval demonstrated um, three specific features. And uh, as I already said, at some point Duval concluded that hydrogen dissipates on metal and uh, other points of the transformer, so he decided to use uh, three hydrocarbon components, specifically methane, ethylene, and uh, acetylene, and thus he developed his triangle. Um, the triangle is equilateral. Uh, each side uh, has calibration. It's calibrated uh, from 0 to 100, and that would be the percentage concentration of the various of those three gases, basically. Uh, let's look at this triangle. Uh, each side of the triangle signifies a specific gas. It's calibrated from 0 to 100, as I mentioned, uh, indicates the percentage. Uh, there are seven areas uh, inside the triangle. Uh, every, each area corresponds to a certain fold type. There is a uh, fold area D1, fold area D2, uh, technical fold areas type 3, 2, and uh, type 1. Uh, one area there is defined as a mixed fault area for both electrical and thermic faults. And uh, there is another point which is quite small up on the top of the triangle uh, when you consider it with the size of all the other uh, fault areas. Um, but it is extremely important because on the top of the triangle we have the area that, uh, gives, us, that gives us the partial discharge. Uh, can you please? Just a second. Okay. You can see right at the top apex of the triangle, you will see uh, designation PD. That would be the partial discharge area. So the sides of this triangle form a coordinate system which uh, can define any specific point in any of those specific areas. And uh, this point identifies a specific fault. So how do we do that? Uh, we have a table uh, which, shows, uh, which shows us a percentage of each, of each gas concentration and specifies what that means. We see that if methane concentration is equal to or higher than 98%, uh, then the corresponding point is in the partial discharge area. If methane concentration is less than 19%, but ethylene uh, is less than 20% and acetylene is less than 4%, that means we have a fault type T1, and this is how we can identify any fault. But what's interesting about the system is that we do not have to memorize this table to identify the faults, because that would make our work uh, quite confusing. Uh, the greatest benefit of this triangle is that it presents information in a graphical manner, and that helps us uh, tackle the problem with a lot less confusion and a lot more precision uh, at identifying uh, a certain fault. So how do exactly we do this? Um, First off, we must measure the required percentages of the gases. And then we take each of the sides of the triangle and we, and, uh, and, and, and then we sum up the amounts in parts per million uh, that corresponds to each of the three, of, of the three gases. Uh, at this point, we have a sum of methane, a sum of uh, ethylene, and the total amount of acetylene. From that, we can calculate the percentage of each gas concentration, and uh, we mark these on the sides of the triangle. Now, this explanation here becomes a little bit more complicated, so we will use, try to use a, particle, uh, a practical example of finding the point that we need. In the next slide here, we have chromatography results uh, from a laboratory or from maybe an online monitor. So we use this data to determine the amounts of the various gases. Um, let's see how this works. Uh, we must first find the gases that interest us for the Duval's triangle method. And in this case, we're looking for gases uh, methane, ethylene, and acetylene. And as soon as we find these gases, we perform uh, these operations to calculate uh, the amounts of gas. In our case here, the percentage of methane uh, that we get is 130 ppm, uh, as we can see here. As for the sum of all three gases, let us add the corresponding values. We add 130 for methane, 200 for ethylene, and 20 for acetylene, and our end result is 37.1%. We repeat the same process for ethane and acetylene, 
uh, calculating the various percentages. As soon as we have that, and um, I could probably lap that unspoken, but repetition is mother of learning, I suppose. Uh, we need to make sure that the sum of the concentration percentages uh, definitely equals 100%. If we have anything other than 100%, that means that we made a mistake, screwed up in our calculations, so we need to do this again, recalculate, find out what, what's going wrong. Uh, now, when we have the correct percentages, we continue with the diagnostics and we place the, these percentages on the triangle. And so, uh, we see here that the concentration of methane is 37.1%. So what we do is we find the corresponding point on the uh, methane side, right there. From that point, we plot a line that is parallel to the acetylene side. Uh, this is the acetylene side and bottom, and we plot the line. So far, quite simple. Now we switch to, Ethane. Let's say ethane, right? Okay. Uh, with, excuse me, this must be ethylene, not ethane on this table. So we take the ethylene side and we plot our specific uh, point uh, corresponding to this concentration right here. And then we go and plot a line parallel to the methane side. What we need to do now is to find the acetylene point. And after that, we plot that point. And then we do the line from the acetylene side parallel to the ethylene side. <clears throat> so if we plot everything correctly, then we need to find the intersection of the three lines now. Uh, this point, this point here, identifies and where it lies on the triangle, identifies a specific uh, fault. In this case here, we can say that we have fault type T3 uh, or the T3 fault for overheating. Uh, and uh, now that we learn to do this, we, we know how to identify the faults. Uh, if we make a mistake while working with the system, uh, the, the intersection point, the, we will not have a single intersection point. The points will not coincide. And this may happen because we plot one of the lines incorrectly or something similar. And uh, if the point, if we don't get a single point, that is a very important indication that something went really wrong and we've made a, a big mistake. So this is the method of identifying faults using the dual triangle. Uh, the triangle also contains uh, many important hints. Uh, for example, the hash marks, there are hash, little hash marks on each of the uh, sites. And uh, these marks point, um, these marks point in the direction that the line uh, must be drawn from, from that side. And uh, that works for each side uh, similarly. Uh, now about a hint on how to locate a point inside the triangle. Uh, first of all, as we can see this here, the percentage of gas content uh, grows clockwise. Therefore, the percentage increases clockwise from 0 to 100, from 0 to 100, and then uh, from 0 to 100 again. If you look at the triangle, you'll, you'll see what I mean. Another point that are the lines that we plot, the, the lines on the other hand, we plot counterclockwise. Um, Look at the uh, look at this methane line here. It must be parallel to the clockwise side. Uh, in this case, the, this is acetylene side, and the acetylene line is plotted parallel to the ethylene side, etc. So, in this part of the presentation, now that we learned of the simple helping hints, the percentage of gas concentration increases uh, clockwise. Uh, the lines are plotted counterclockwise. And this here is the simplest method of finding a point inside the triangle. So in this manner, we can identify uh, seven different fault types. Uh, we're talking about electrical faults. That would be partial discharges, a D1 type discharge, that is a low energy discharge, and the D2 type is a high energy discharge. As you can see here, the difference uh, between um, uh, the difference between uh, D2 and D1 charges depends on how acetylene concentration grows uh, from thermical ele electrical faults. This is because acetylene formation is a very important indication of arcing. 
In addition, we do have thermic faults. Uh, the T1 fault, which means a thermic fault with temperatures below 300 centigrade. Uh, there is T2 thermic fault uh, with temperatures from 3 to 700 centigrade. And a T3 thermic fault with temperatures over 700 degrees centigrade. So let's take a look at the faults specified in the IC60599 standard. Uh, those are a partial discharge and an electric arc. Let me find this for you. Mm -hmm. In, uh, excuse me. In simple terms, uh, we can say that um, uh, it is an open arc. This happens if the insulation medium does not have integrity. If that happens inside the transformer, as a rule, that happens between two conducting points. Uh, indeed, such discharges uh, often happen due to insufficient impregnation of the paper with oil or poor workmanship, uh, poor impregnation. It can be caused by overheating or insulation wear. Uh, this type of fault may also be caused by high humidity inside the transformer. Uh, we will also deal with uh, D1 type faults, uh, electrical faults, uh, that is arcs or sparks. That occurs in faulty parts and that often happens due to loss of electrical energy and uh, due to oil contamination. Uh, small, sparks occur, uh, small sparks occur inside the system and that is evidenced by uh, breaks in the paper. Uh, they can be sudden congestions, uh, particles of carbon can be detected in the oil. A D2 type fault is also possible. Uh, that would be a much larger electric arc. It's a much more significant problem. It manifests itself in flashes and high energy, as well as short circuits um, between the high voltage and the ground uh, interference. If the system uh, is energized, these faults release large amounts of energy and they are indeed very strong inside the system. Next, we also have uh, thermic faults. In this example, uh, let us look at the faults uh, that implies the temperatures do not exceed 300 degrees centigrade. Uh, such faults may be caused by transformer overloads uh, since some uh, elements, some cooling component may be blocked by diffuse flow, it may be constricted somehow, and there are a number of things that can cause a type one fault. Uh, same reasons may lead us to a type two fault. Uh, the temperatures in such faults a reach from 300 to 700 degrees centigrade. Uh, with such damage, there will be current between the clamps as well as um, uh, weak fake contacts as a consequence. There will be insulation wear and there will be intense formation of carbon in the oil. Uh, the color of the paper and um, some other elements will also change in some parts of the transformer. Uh, besides, there is the T3 type fault with uh, strong circulating currents between the reservoir and the core. Uh, with this temperature, please note that the hotter the transformer and the shorter its lifespan. Therefore, it is important to note that as a result, we get uh, significantly increased transformer wear. So we need to be very aware of such uh, faults. Okay. Okay. Now we are nearing the end here. We have about 10 minutes left. Um, I want to discuss some of the triangles created by Mr. Duval. Uh, if I needed to, if I wanted to talk about all of them, uh, that will take a lot longer than one hour. So um, let me just say at this point that Mr. Duval has created 11 triangles. Uh, there is a T1 triangle that is used for mineral oil. There is T2 triangle, um, type of triangles for uh, used for on-load tap changers. Mm -hmm. Uh, there is a triangle for MR LTC. There is a triangle for, T there is a T3 triangle, excuse me. Uh, that is designed for various alternative alternatives to uh, regular mineral oil. Uh, the T3 triangle, there is one for biotemp, one for FR3. Um, there is a T2 triangle for silicon oil. Uh, so basically we have four T3 triangles and the T4 triangle presented here in this next slide. That is designed for low temperature faults. Uh, the T5 triangle uh, on the left is designed for high energy faults. Uh, the T6 uh, goes for low energy faults uh, in FR3 oil and the T7 triangle is for thermic faults in FR3 oil. Uh, so there is a lot more to be told about the triangles 
but uh, today we only generally consider the first triangle, just mentioning the other ones. So the T4 triangle is used for uh, a more in-depth uh, study of faults related to partial discharges, T1 or T2 faults. Uh, T5, the fifth triangle, that is used in case of high energy faults, be T2 or T3. The T4 and T5, they're not used in cases when the problems are purely, purely electrical. Now, these uh, triangles additionally define three uh, new fault types. Specifically, that would be um, uh, type C fault that is located here uh, in the T5 triangle, if you take a look at that. And uh, it also exists in the T4 triangle. Uh, we can also identify faults of types O and S. Now, a C-type fault is a thermic fault that is accompanied by paper carbonizing in 80% of cases. An O-type fault is an overheating with temperatures uh, over 250 degrees centigrade. And the S-type fault, that is an unexpected gassing in mineral oil that happens due to thermal stress and usually due to poor oil refining. 